The story of how your food ends up as poo is an amazing one. The food that you eat is broken down, firstly by chewing and mashing in the mouth. You fashion a little ball from this food called a bolus with the help of the tongue. A little bridge called the epiglottis closes over to protect your airways so that the food doesn't go down into your lungs every time you eat. During swallowing, the food bolus is pushed back down to the entrance of the food pipe known as the esophagus. Starting in the esophagus, an amazing action called peristalsis takes place, and we can see that here. Think of peristalsis like the movement of a worm crawling on the ground. Peristalsis is powered by muscles inside the gut itself and is the force that enables the food to travel from the esophagus to the stomach and all the way down to the anus. The stomach is a J-shaped moving container full of acid. The folds of the stomach that we can see here are called rugae. As the food bolus arrives in the stomach, it causes the stomach to stretch and a lot of enzymes and acid are produced. These help to break down or digest food. Once eating starts, the lower part of the stomach is constantly churning like a blender and most of your food is broken down into tiny particles no more than three millimeters. The small size of the particles allows it to easily pass into the small bowel. Now this pulpy acidic mash enters the very long windy tube known as the small bowel. The mash is digested with the assistance of a flat pear-shaped gland known as a pancreas and bile. The pancreas produces a number of enzymes that are really good at breaking down proteins into small amino acids. Bile is a yellow-green sticky, sticky fluid produced by the liver and acts like a detergent to break down big clumps of fat into little fat particles. The small bowel also contains enzymes that help digest carbohydrates into simple sugars like glucose. We're traveling through the small bowel now, and yes, as you can see, it is very long indeed. In average adult, it measures around six meters in length. Right now, it feels almost like we're in a roller coaster. Amino acids, little fat particles, and simple sugars can travel through the cells lining the small bowel and into the bloodstream. This process is called absorption. It means that nutrients can get to different parts of the body where they are needed. The small bowel absorbs almost all food nutrients and minerals such as iron. Any food that is not digested by the small bowel, such as fiber, enters the large bowel or colon. In the colon, a lot of water is taken away from the food, making it more firm. A lot of bacteria is present in the colon, and after processing food, they can produce gas and short-chain fatty acids. Short-chain fatty acids are valuable nutrients for the cells lining the colon. The indigestible, dried food product now becomes waste. It gets stored in the last part of the colon, known as the rectum, and now is ready to leave the body as poo during a bowel motion. <laughs>